these, y'all want to know these messages that you're receiving are crucial. They're very much involved with warnings. Because the Father knows what's coming and he's preparing his people. So if the word is not effectually affecting you, then check yourself to see if you're one of his. Because the word is supposed to affect you. It's supposed to convict you and make you feel the wrong that you're doing and make you yeah. feel the need to get it right. Yeah. Because your father's coming home. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Yes, yes, yes. Your father's coming to yeah. take you from this place to another place. Somebody might not be waiting for that, Brother Gavin, but somebody here is waiting for him to come through the clouds of the air to rescue you, ransom you from this earth. Hmm. It's a very simple verse, and once I read that, if you want to sit down, you can, but if you don't, just keep standing. Proverbs 4.23 says, Watch over your now we're going to replace that word heart with what it really means is mind. Y'all ready? Watch over your mind with all diligence. For out of it are the sources of life. You may be seated if you want to. Watch over, here's a key word right here, your. Watch over your mind. Don't watch over mine. Number one, you can't see my mind. Uh -huh. All you can see is the actions that I bring before you. And I can very well trick you with my actions, with my expressions. I can make you think I'm the happiest kid on the block. But in my mind, I'm greedy. Only one entity knows your thoughts. And he's above right now. Hallelujah. But he is telling you to watch what you let come into your mind with all due diligence. Pay attention to every sentence, every word spoken to you because you don't know what you're letting into your mind, especially people who listen to gossip. Watch over your minds. Tatter tales. Don't let people talk to you with that junk because they're feeding it into your mind. Are y'all hearing me? Now you can leave from here and go sit down there and people uh, pour their trash into your can rather than you saying, no, I don't want that trash anymore. I got to wash my mind. I, I can't afford to sit up and think evil about somebody who I don't even know. And I don't want you to tell me you're trying to paint a picture about them to me so I can have the same viewpoint you have. I don't want to know your viewpoint. If anything, since you're telling me something about them, I'm going to talk to them. I hope I'm talking to some men and women in here. You know, we, we, we still play games like children. Carrying tales. No, 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 no. If you got some problem, you go talk to the one who, who, who's supposed to be against you. Go talk to them. Go ahead and invite them to a lunch. Can you meet me tomorrow? Uh, go ahead. I'm going to treat you. Where you, where you want to go to eat breakfast? And go and sit down and find out what's going on. Now, they can lie to you, but at least you're putting forth an effort to keep peace between you. You're doing your part as a peacekeeper. Y'all hear me, don't you? See, we, we got to understand your mind is valuable to Almighty Yah. Your mind is where he communicates with you. He don't communicate with you through your brain. He communicates with you through your mind. But we got to watch over our minds with diligence. Be very careful. Scrutinize who you're talking to. Dig down into them and see where they're coming from. What are they trying to push into your thinking? Because if you don't watch folk, they'll have you thinking evil about somebody who is one of y'all's chosen people. Romans 12. Romans 12. Y'all know usually I go to 12, 1 and 2. Well, I'm not going there today. I'm going a little bit further down. Romans 12, 1 and 2. 
Romans 12, verse number 8. He who encourages in the encouragement, keep on encouraging. He who is sharing, do it with sincerity. He who is leading, do it in diligence. He who shows compassion, do it with joy. Y'all see that? But now, if you're leading, Brother Roland, Brother Benny, see, even though he's on the radio, he's still leading somebody. Yes, sir. If you are leading, you need to stay up on what you're doing mm -hmm. with diligence. Yep. In other words, pay attention to everything that you're doing because you got people following you. Yes, now, if, if you make a wrong step, they're going to make a wrong step too until they catch it. But they're going to be the man the wrong step that they got to repent of now because of you. Mm -hmm. So you got to make sure that you are telling people the right thing at the right time. Hallelujah. Coming from the yeah. right one. Yes, indeed. So when y'all look at me and y'all say, well, Brother Isaac, you sound like you're chastising us all the time. Sure well, that is me, folks. <laughs> <laughs> you must mean it. Because mm -hmm. I don't sit down and make up messages. I'm preaching what he's telling me to preach. Hallelujah. So if it's affecting you, then you need to chastise it. Mm -hmm. But always remember, he chastised those that he loved. So if he's loving you, he's going to get you right. Uh -huh. How many of y'all don't mind being reproved? Hallelujah. Corrected. Because yeah. he will do that. Because yeah. he wants you to get it right. Hallelujah. So if you're leading somebody, do it with all due diligence. Don't, don't hesitate. Every chance you get, do it. Hallelujah. Yesterday, and I, I bring this up because this is my little testimony, really. Uh, yesterday we were uh, playing a little ball on the, on the court, and this man hit me on the side. He said, I got to talk to you about the word. And somebody was saying, come on, come on, come on, come on, come play with us. And I said, no, I'm here. I'm not here for that. I'm here to talk to you. And we got to talking about the word. And talking and talking and talking. I even brought Brother Shannon in on that conversation. Why? Because that's my purpose. My purpose is not to play ball. My purpose is to meet people while I'm playing ball. Yeah. Now we got somebody who's really listening. He came here for, he came here for Passover. And with the help of Almighty God, he's going to come for good. Because he is receiving the word. Hallelujah. 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 Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse number 7 says these words. I'm trying to slow down. I was told last week that I got to slow down. So I, I thought I was doing 35. <laughs> but I must have went real fast that week. I was reciting in that courtroom. Second Corinthians chapter 8. Verse number seven. He says, so I want to say to the Corinthian assembly, but as you excel in every way, what did he say, in some ways? As you excel in every way, in faith and speech and knowledge and diligence and in your love for us, what you should excel in this kind gift as well. But I want you to focus on that you've got to excel in your diligence. We are not, listen to me. The Father told me to use this word. Thank you, Father. You are not giving him enough diligence in that word right there. Y'all see that? You're not excelling in it. you got to excel in your diligence. You're not putting enough into what you're supposed to be doing for him. Now, I know we got quiet just then because that must be affecting everybody. We are not really devoting enough time in our work with him. And I was studying about him. Not just about him, but him himself. We are not devoting ourselves completely to him as much as we should. We are only giving him tidbits of time. Tidbits of our energy. A little here, a little there. But he, he wants a deeper relationship with you because we are going to need faith in him in a little while. Maybe we don't see what's coming.
coming toward us as deeply as we should. But if we are looking at things the way it's shown to us, I want you to understand that there is something coming that your faith must be incorporated into your life or you're going to suffer. The Father, the Father is waking up his people from the sleep that we have slept for too long. And this thing is creeping up on us. I say creeping, I'm going to use an oxymoronic term, but it's creeping up on us swiftly. I, I, I've been trying to get my garden started. I didn't got the, the dirt turned over. I didn't got the manure and put in there. And, and things just keep on popping up, keeping me from doing what, I'm, what I want to do. I, I want my garden to be prosperous because I know in the near future, Somebody's got no hair for it. Hallelujah. We just don't understand because we are so spoiled. We are so spoiled in our existence right now. Everything's so comfortable. Everything's so nice. And while we're sitting here right now, everybody's just cool. You got the air conditioner set just right. Your butt ain't hurting because you're sitting on a cushion. The word coming free. No pastor begging you for money. Not asking you for no anniversary gifts. Come on. See, you're spoiled. You want everything just dumped into your lap. And that's why sometimes when y'all hear me teaching, I say, what does that mean? Tell me what that means. And, and y'all look at me with that strange look on your face. What you want is for me to tell you. But it's things that you got to diligently search for if you really want it. I'm going to drop some stuff in your lap, but I'm going to make you think. I'm going to make you do some thinking. Sometimes I ask questions in here, I already know the answer to it. I do it on purpose. Sometimes I say, oh, well, well, you know what, honey? Y'all think I'm, I'm wrong, stupid all of a sudden. I'm not stupid. I know where I am. But I'm trying to see if you know where I am. Because sometimes I can be teaching and your mind and be in, in North Oak somewhere. But not here. See, I'm the, kind of, I'm the kind of pastor, I'm the kind of teacher who cares for your soul. And if I have to get on your time, I'm going to get on your time. I'm going to make you understand that if you don't diligently seek him, you will never find him. <laughs> no matter how much I preach, you got to diligently seek him through the word that I bring to you. I'm bringing you a word today. That word is diligent. Are we diligent? Are we really spending quality time with our creator. On, on last night, I told, I told the congregation on last night, I came in here and fell flat on my face on this floor and I stayed there for a while because the, the devil had to beat me up a little bit. You know, I, I was tired, I was weary. And, and, I, and I let him do it because I was busy doing things that I thought I needed to do. I was whipped. Frustrated, anxiety ridden, stressed. Oh, I know when I got up off the floor. Hallelujah. I felt that energy. Yeah. I'm still feeling it. 